Hi, I'm with Bill Whitlow. Whitlow. From where? Spencer, Indiana. Spencer, Indiana. We're on our way up to uh, Virginia City. Yes. I was going to do laundry, but he sidetracked me. <laughs> so I got my dirty laundry in the back of the van, and uh, we're going to wash it on a rock in the river. Yeah, we're going to go up to the uh, Ruby and do our washing. This is our post office here. Is it? They love it when I bring in a stack of uh, DVDs to be shipped out. Yeah. To Japan and really? Saudi Arabia and places like that. Really? Russia. It's easier to send something to Russia than it is Canada. I know. How many people live in Ennis? Oh, I don't know. Probably about in the summertime, probably like close to a thousand. That is? Well, you know, in this whole area here. Yeah. The whole valley, probably two or three thousand. Really? The valley's about 40, 50 miles from north to south. See that high peaked roof? Yeah. That's the house I lived in for oh, really? about a month and a half before I had to move out of it. I had a $800 metal detector and I stuck it in the back of the open truck that I was moving my stuff with. And it fell out somewhere between my house down there and this house. Oh, wow. And I've never found it. No, some, some, somebody found it. Somebody found it. Yeah. And they said, holy shit, I got me a brand new uh, yeah. metal detector. I didn't have the garage up when I lived there. Well, uh, a nice little house. Yeah, it was real small. I'm going down to Jackson Hole from here, and I'll go out there to Trailside Gallery and say, have you got any David Lemon pieces? And I said, <laughs> no, and I said, Jesus, you're really missing the hole. Well, I'm actually at Mon Mountain Trails Gallery down there. Are you? Yeah, if you go in there, you'll see uh, the two life-size pieces. Yeah, it's Phil taking the photograph of the valley from this overlook. We're on our way up to Virginia City, and uh, he used to be a photographer for a newspaper, and he's retired from that. It's a beautiful valley. I used to live right there where the trees come to a point at the mouth of that canyon. And then uh, the daughter of Ernest, no, the son of Ernest Hemingway and his wife moved there after I moved out. I don't know how long they lived there, but uh, they lived there for a while. Yeah, this is Virginia City here. And that's the uh, courthouse built in the 1870s. No, this ain't the worst place I was at. It was an old, beat up, old buildings, just about a half a block long. Well, this has uh, the original buildings with the original glass and some of them have stores with stuff still sitting on the shelves. Really? Yeah. That might be it. I don't remember all this other stuff. It's been quite a few years since I've been here. Hey, uh, I'm going to call Gloria and she has a house right here. She does reproduction, repro reproduction, uh, reproduction Indian clothing. Oh, really? And let me just make sure she that wouldn't mind me. Well, she's got, she's obviously here. We'll just stop in and say hi. Look at that old house. That looks 1860s. Yeah. Cool. Are there the original 1800s top hats? Oh, yeah. And then... The Indians did a lot of stuff to them. Yeah, yeah. I found these. Yeah, look at this thing. Isn't that going to be cool? Oh, yeah. Let me it's take that's... a video of that. But that will go on there, and I'm just... Yeah. I'm this uh, friend of mine, really cool. he did uh, the reenactments with us. He just passed away in March, and he had a hat, top hat with one of them on it. Uh, feathers had a beaded headband. This is a beaver pelt that uh, Gloria just got done uh, creating. 
Wow, look at the detail in that. Oh, yeah. And the shield and that. It's got everything on it. Turn it around, let's see the fur. It's a blonde beaver. Yeah. He was blonde, wasn't he? <laughs> He's a happy, he's a happy beaver. Well, it was a fun <laughs> visit, Gloria. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. All right. Tell me about these lights, uh, Joe. Well, I heard them on the, uh, that they were around, and I saw some globes up here in these windows above the, uh, the second door. Yeah. Here. And I saw some globes up there, and I said, what are those for? Well, those are the original lights, which were originally kerosene. And then uh, in 1911, they were electrified by, of all things, an electronic engine, an electrical engineer who graduated from Cornell yeah. in New York back in who knows what, because this was 1911 when he put them all together. That's the old dimmer right there. Yeah. Wow. I mean, look at the, the, the brass plates that the thing would run on to lower the uh, intensity of the light. Uh, you found these globes in... Uh, Barrels, right? Just these twelve. These twelve. I'm, I'm videoing right now. Or we're in a barrel. Were stuffed upstairs here. They were stuffed here and there. Yeah, but they were packed in straw in a barrel dated 1870. Two. 1872. Custer was still alive. So, and we were still fighting Indians when those globes were made. Yeah. Unbelievable. This is Virginia City. This is the first lodge in Montana. Yeah, number yeah. two is over in Ennis, I think. Yes, but they were first here. Yeah. They shared this. Yeah. And the interesting thing was, Ennis, too, were rebels. Oh, is that right? D.C. were Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was built during the Civil War, and over where I live, the, oh, the yeah. rebels built their lodge, and up here in Virginia City, the uh, Yankees built theirs. Yes. And, That's uh, interesting. But, but V.C., uh, the second was also here, so they met under cross flags. Really? And the reason they got along is because you can't talk politics or religion yeah. when you're in the lodge. Yeah. So all they did was talk about the war and and healed themselves. And it wasn't very long before it didn't matter which lodge you joined, whether yeah. you're a rebel or a Yankee. Anyway, this is Joe Redfeather. He's a uh, Lakota war chief. And, and it's and such an, and Gloria D's uh, husband. Yeah. And a uh, mason. And a mason. Uh, Brad Mason. Yeah. Um, Geronimo was a Mason. Oh, is that right? Was yeah. he really? Senator Goldwater once uh, was asked who do you think the favorite son of Arizona was himself or Geronimo? And he thought a minute and he said, you know, he said, when troops start jumping out of perfectly good aircraft, yelling Goldwater, I'll take the credit. This is the hangman building here. They hung uh, several guys for the rafters of the. Uh, roof before they put the roof on and uh, the reproduction of them hanging anyway that's uh, kind of a reproduction of what it looked like when they hung them there was looks like six guys hanging from that center rafter in fact if you look up there on the rafter you can see the rope burn from the uh, hanging uh, There it is. There's one right there. See that kind of a mark on the on the on the uh, wood? Oh yeah. That's a rope burn from the hanging. Well, it's certainly a big enough board. Oh yeah. Probably didn't even shiver when they hung them. <laughs> now right here, behind the Mason's Lodge, which we were just in, um, this is where Henry Plummer was hung. Uh, and I can't remember what they called this corral. The OK. <laughs> well, no, it, it was called some kind of either the elephant corral or the Macedon corral or some yeah. corral. But uh, huh. he was hung here. And Henry Plummer was the sheriff of Madison County back then in the 1860s and 70s. I'm not sure what, what year he was hung. But uh, the uh, they hung a few people there. And one of them was uh, Clubfoot, and uh, he was part of Henry Plummer's gang. And uh, his wife heard about it and came uh, riding her horse down from her house. And I'll show you where he was kept for the winter in pickled 
glory in the bathtub. <laughs> Pickled glory. Pickled glory. Man, they dug a hole here, didn't they? Yeah, they, that's new. That wasn't done back then. <laughs> what would they have done if they just struck gold there? <laughs> Stop everything and start, you know, like in the Six. paint your wagon. Yeah. Throw the body out and start, start digging. Start digging. Uh, over there, that old church we're coming up to, uh -huh. the uh, stained glass windows were made by Tiffany's back in New York. Really? Yeah. It's right here with the uh, yellow flowers in front of it. Yeah is uh, where the wife of Clubfoot came from and and she uh, cut them down. She was so pissed off at the people here in town she uh, put them in her bathtub for the winter in pickle juice. <laughs> and then when the spring came and they could get out of here on a stagecoach she took them down to uh, um, Salt Lake and Lake Salt Lake to bury them. Now that's a woman that was really angry. I guess so.